wearing number 16, so he's in there in place of James Skehel. There was a suggestion that uh, Colum Kalnan might also have come into the reckoning, but uh, I don't think that has been the case. Meanwhile, it's Richie Hogan advancing, and the keeper could be in uh, business here straight away, called into the action. That one has run out over the end line, and it's gone wide. Well, Jerry, I think if you look at that, there's some... Kevin Hines lost his horn, but he stayed with Richie Hogan. I'm, I'm not sure if he didn't hook him with his arm. We might see a replay in a second here, but great defending, and really, Richie Hogan was odds-on to score a goal there and maybe put this game away. If you watch it here, Kevin Hines lost the hurl. He's following in here. And Richie Hogan looks like all he's doing. And look at Kevin Hines, just got back. And uh, great defending, and the ball has gone wide. Ball pucked out into the uh, Galway half forward line. Towards Johnny Glynn in there, taken instead by Damian Hayes. Back out here as far as David Collins. Into open space. Every so often there are big goal chances appearing there. And this time the defence holds firm and it's JJ Delaney able to take that one away. Well, I think a number of the Kilkenny fans' hearts in the mouth time. Out it comes once again towards David Collins. Galway needing a good second half and a good start to the second half. That's across towards Joe Cooney. Joe Cooney Jr. that is into top of the right. And this race for possession is going to be won by Paul Murphy here. The young army man, all star, had a great season last year, doing very well in his second championship year all the way into midfield, once again it's taken here by Tony O'Gregan. Back up into the corner once again, and this time there is a man in the corner, and this time it's Cyril Donlan going across, trying to take on Paul Murphy, making an angle for himself, trying to eat into that uh, half-time lead of four points, not succeeding there. Yeah, you'd have to say, Jordan Galway's shooting, you know, has been so poor, uh, that, that, to, you know, they haven't, they've scored no ball from, from play. I see David Hurley here, you know, he dropped the ball, and when the ball goes in, there, in around the full forward line, Galway do look dangerous, look like, you know, they've had a few goals, got the two goals, had a couple of more chances, and, uh, but really, you know, they need to start winning a bit of possession and knocking over a couple of simple scores from play, because you can't win another and not score from play. Again, the ball is caught in midfield by Galway, again, it's uh, Joe Canning has got in there to try and take the possession, leaving one man short inside, however, and it's Tommy Welch who emerges with this, out as far as Jackie Tyrrell, big long one down towards Richie Hogan once again, he's having quite a match causing major problems and underlining that with a lovely point here point in each half for the uh, very talented Richie Hogan and really a big big handful for Kevin Hines down there yeah absolutely uh, uh, very strong in the air as Eddie Brennan said there at half time he's won a couple of great balls and he's you know I think he's 5 7 5 8 uh, one possession there again and simple score tapped it over the bar and that's the difference between the teams Kilkenny are scoring freely and Kilkenny's work rate is very impressive this afternoon really trying to work for a victory if they can get that that's down by Jonathan Glynn as far as David Collins they try to cut it out there Michael Fennelly trying to do so Niall Burke going back going further away from goal missing his touch in to health came here Latanian trying to play it out here was uh, Killian Buckley finally it's back with Andy Smith and a chance of a score here for Andy Smith and he's put it over the bar beautifully done he's a great driving force in midfield Andy Smith and that's his uh, first point and Galway's first point of the match to come from play that's right Jerry and you remember the first day uh, Andy scored the first point from play after about eight minutes they hadn't scored it was a hugely important score and I think that score again you know they have to try to build on that now and win possession Galway if they want to get back into this game still four between them TJ Reid out at left half forward now here going this way and that to try and hold on to it across towards Walter Welch at a good first half he'd be very pleased with his debut slipping it back out to the captain Owen Larkin trying to advance difficult one here for Richie Hogan to get the stick to he did well the backs converge on it it stays in play Johnny Cohen tries to slip away with it shouldered by Walter Welch and the referee sees a Kilkenny player on the ground and he's blown his whistle and the referee has noted the umpire who called for a 65 the ball had gone out so two 65s in the space of the opening four minutes of this uh, second half Kilkenny still in front by those four points. But you can see Ger Kilkenny going for the juggler, uh, Richie Hogan first of all after half time headed for the goals, the same with Owen Larkin there, he could have tapped over a point but he went for the goals, a good save by Fergal Flannery but this move of Walter Walsh I think onto Johnny Cohen has been you know, crucial in how the game has developed so far, he's, he's dominating and winning possession and keeping Johnny Cohen out of the game. And Cohen hasn't been taken off him, Henry Shefflin hitting and inevitably Henry Shefflin putting it over the bar from the 65 so that's six points now for Henry Shefflin and Kilkenny's lead stretches to five early stage of the second half yeah great strike and Fergal Fenner in fairness stood his ground and a, and a good save I think it was just here Michael Fenner just knocked out Johnny Cohen out over the line I'm not sure if the ball went over the line though 
from that puck out into the half forwards once again. This time it is uh, Brian Hogan. Over there came Kelly, Killian Buckley, shouldered hard. Niall, Buck, Niall Burke got onto it, comes back out again into the middle of the field. They wait for it there, in particular Tony O'Gregan, an incensed with Chipar, didn't like the decision, but it's going to be a free to goal way. Referee James McGraw whistling. And they still continue there with their argument with Chipar and uh, Tony O'Gregan. It's going to be a free, and it'll be Joe Canning who will take it. Yeah, we just see Galway, you know, it's so casual, uh, Jerry, since, you know, that's about the fourth or fifth time uh, they've been caught in possession. You know, they got a free at the end of that, but just waiting for the ball. At this level, you just can't wait. You have to step into the ball and get to it, and, uh, you know, they've been caught on a number of occasions with possession, and, and they've handed Kilkenny three or four points up to now. Well, there shouldn't be any nerves at this stage, but there should be oceans of desire where Galway's concerned. They are 24 years without the Liam McCarthy Cup. Joe Canning... Their great talisman, number 14, ready to hit this. Four points in the first half, and this one has swung away to the left-hand side. It was always offline, it wasn't an easy one, and that sun now is in the eyes of the Galway backs for the second half. Shuddering collision here, Johnny Glynn was one of those involved, the other was Killian Buckley. Yeah, you know, a lot of those, you know, shoulder to shoulder or into the body, but that was a very, very hard hit, and... Uh, Great block down there, Brian Hogan again, you know, and he's having a super game, he's holding the centre, and Niall Burke not in the game at all at centre forward. Kilkenny have it back, it's Killian Buckley once again. Oh, what about that for a steal from Johnny Glynn? Got the stick in quickly, knocked it away, but it's uh, going to be Kilkenny's possession. Brilliant defending there by young Johnny Glynn. Only a minor last year, played in this year's Under-21 Championship, where Galway, of course, went under to Kilkenny in the semi-final of that championship and uh, goalkeeper is on right now, Virgil Flannery was in goal in that match, he's come on as a second half sub for James Skehill. Meanwhile Henry Shefflin striking over his left shoulder and this one has gone wide. And a little bit of wrestling immediately after that, David Collins involved with Henry Shefflin. Well he's ferociously competitive Henry Shefflin and the referee has come in here now, he's been speaking to his linesman Barry Kelly, who was yeah. refereeing, of course, three weeks ago. I'd, I'd say it's Andy Smith and Henry Shepard. Every you know, there's been a lot of clashes between the two of them off the ball. If you watch here now, after the block again, Andy Smith follows through, and the two of them. Yeah, it was Andy. David Collins came in after that. Yeah, so, well, uh, it's unusual. The two of them haven't been carried. You know, Henry Shepard pulled. Uh, I know he, retali he retaliated, and you'd imagine both of them should have been booked. Virgil Flannery, who is Galway's third sub, used. Only to Owen Larkin. Back again it comes for Kilkenny, trying to build another attack here. Walter Welch trying to reach down to his bootlaces to get that ball up. Not easy when you're 6-3, 6-4. Ball comes back up here again, dangerously so to Damien Hayes. Hayes looking for a bit of room. Back to Cyril Donlan. Still Donlan, and the referee has blown his whistle. Doesn't count. The whistle went before the shot, and the goal doesn't count. David Burke's incense, all the Galway fans all around Croke Park are annoyed by that, but the whistle did go, and there wasn't any advantage given. I know it did, Gerard, but you'd have to say, Damien Hayes was more fouled, I'd say, than Cyril Donlan, and Donlan was true, you know, given the benefit. Damien Hayes was definitely pulled back there, it should have been a free, it wasn't given. Then he gets out here, gives the ball here now, Donlan breaks through. And, like, where was the foul there? He just broke the tackle, there was no foul, and... It it probably was for the earlier one, so five points still between them rather than two. Joe Canning is going call, to take this free, big, it big, is a big call. It's a big call at this stage, he'll probably tap it over the bar. The angle is a bit tight for him, so he does do exactly that. And now it's uh, five points for Joe Canning, and there's uh, still a little row going on off the ball, heating up very, very considerably here. But that's a big, big uh, turning point in the game, Jerry. You know, it, it, there was a long time between the time that that Damien Hayes was fouled and from the time he blew the whistle for Sir Donald, there were two separate incidents and as far as I can see Sir Donald and Mawson fouled he just broke the tackle and buried the ball and I think that the free shouldn't have been given Goal never counted anyway and uh, one point for Joe Canning rather than three for Galway line ball coming up for Kilkenny this one to be taken by Michael Fennelly and the fans now Raising the noise level very considerably, in as far as Henry Shefflin. Shefflin beats his man, Cooney goes after him. And Shefflin takes too many steps and it's a free out. 
The decision going against Henry Shefflin, free to Galway. Chance for them to launch another attack. It's taken quickly by Tony O'Gregan. Into those forwards who look to have plenty of scores among them if they can get decent ball in there in front of uh, David Herity's goal. Two goals from play in the first half. They're appealing this one here in particular, Cyril Donnellan. Linesman is there is uh, John Sexton from Cork, originally from Limerick. And it's a line ball given to Galway. Yeah, interesting to say, I think it might have been the other way, but Sir Donnellan let it go as if it was a Galway ball, but I thought it might have come off himself, we'll see. Anthony cutting about a word there with the linesman. It's Joe Canning who's got to take it. Well, he's been known to put these over. Can he do so? He certainly can. Oh, that's his trademark signature skill. Brilliantly done by Big Joe, who's got a sixth. And now it's 113 to 27. Oh, an absolutely brilliant piece of skill. I don't know whether it was going in or out. We didn't get a replay of that, but absolutely brilliant skill. And now we have a game on a game on our hands. We have to say, God, we have settled down really now and came with much more freedom than they did in the first half. Three between them. Big puck out. Missed there by Larkin. Back go the Galway halfbacks. Tony O'Gregan taking it. About to be blocked there by Richie Power. Coming in as well as Richie Hogan. Standing his ground there firmly as Fergal Moore. Knocked over by Richie Hogan. Free out to Galway. And now Galway, as you say, Michael, they really are pumped up. But they're being productive in what they're doing in the second half. They were standing back too much in the first. Tony O'Gregan, a huge one up as far as Damian Hayes. About to be challenged by Jackie Tyrrell. A little hand pass inside here, in as far as Johnny Glynn. Played off here, in as far as Niall Burke, running into a lot of Kilkenny players. David Burke, his namesake in the green helmet, number 10, trying to come in to help. Picked up again by Niall Burke. Slipped off there as far as Joe Canning. Off the post and back out. How did that stay out? It comes as far as TJ Reid, and it's a huge lead off for Kilkenny. Galway with one goal disallowed already, and now Joe Canning has hit the butt of the upright. Henry Shefflin at the other end, 65 metres from the Galway target, picks out a colleague over there. It's young Killian Buckley, the 20 year old UCD student, who puts it over the bar. First point for him in this final, and Kilkenny fans are much, much happier. They lead once again by four, but there's a long time to go. We're only in the 13th minute of the second half. Yeah, Gerber, that's a four point swing. What a 